Hello, my name is AJ and welcome to my presentation about enriching elastic security events and alerts with threat intelligence. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. We have worked pretty hard in the threat intel team to come up with these features. So thank you so much for being here and witnessing this presentation with me. So with that in mind, let me start by giving you some context about what threat intelligence means in this context. So when I say threat intelligence throughout this talk, I'm really talking about integrating data feeds from trusted third party sources in which we can create an intelligence pipeline and receive indicators for threat matching. So we can match those uh, indicators with events and or alerts and create certain enrichments on those so that the triage process of an analyst could be streamlined and the threat hunting becomes easier. And that's kind of the purpose of threat intelligence and that's the context that I want to provide around it. So with that in mind, let me go over the agenda for my talk. So in the first section, we have the obtaining indicators part in which I'll be talking about how we create those um, threat intel pipelines. And in the second section with the event enrichments, we'll be talking about specifically how events are enriched. And there's a very um, special mechanism for that called indicator metros that are executed by the detection engine. So in that section, we'll be looking at how the indicator metros work and why we enrich events. And for the alert enrichments, they're a little different than event enrichments in the sense that they don't have to be created by indicator match rules. Any alert that is created by any detection rule can be enriched, and we will look into how that happens and why. And in the last section, with mean time to detect and mean time to remediate, we'll look into how these threat intel features are helpful for the analyst workflow. So for obtaining indicators, we are offering a file beat thread intel module. So this module makes it easier for the indicators from the following sources to be consumed quite easily. So we have anomaly, malware, bizarre, mist, UCH, reported future, alien vault, all of these, um, all of these sources are available for establishing thread intel pipelines with the file beat module. Um, additionally, we are very, very close to offering a package integration with Fleet so that it would really be just one click to integrate these sources. Um, I cannot give you a specific date, but it's coming really soon. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. But this is not the only way. So if you were to have any kind of absolutely custom indicators in your organization that you would like to match against, so we offer the option to add threat indices through um, Kibana advanced settings to the default threat index. So by default, this is just file beat, but you can add anything, any index in there that you want, as long as it has the elastic common schema mappings, especially with regards to the threat fields, they should just work out of the box. So highly recommended. Um, so that's how we create the pipelines for the indicators to come in into the Elasticsearch cluster for uh, matching. And let's see how we can utilize those indicators with event enrichments, specifically with the indicator metros. And the indicator metros, basically what happens is that we can get some little events and then as long as they are matching any kind of threat with the indicator indices that we have, then we kind of create an alert with those. And the way that works, is that, yeah, so we have the events in the source index, we have indicators in an indicator index, and we have the detection engine, and this is where the rules are being executed. And the indicator match rule, this is a special rule. This is the only kind of rule that really queries the indicator index and the source index at the same time. And as long as there is a match, then it creates the enriched alerts. But what happens is that by the time that these alerts are created in the sense that they're written into the alerts index, they're already enriched and they contain the event data as well as the indicator data as an enrichment. So this is why the indicator match rules are special as they convert the events into alerts with the enrichments on them. That's why these are called event enrichments. So the way 
that the indicator metros are configured. So when an analyst wants to basically create an indicator metro, they just come to the rule creation flow and choose the indicator match as the rule type. And then after that, they can select the index patterns. This is where the source events are. So for instance, we have a bunch of pre-populated indices here. So we have end game, for example, for endpoint protection events. We log beat for Windows specific events. We have logs. So all of these um, events and in these indices are available for threat matching. Uh, we don't have the um, custom query section. So this is a query that we should use for performance benefits specifically. This filters down the source events um, before the matching takes place. So this is really good for performance benefits because if we don't use the custom query every single event in the indices that we specified will be um, searched for the threat matching. But if we know that we want to match, for example, on a domain IP address, then we just want to make sure that we kind of uh, look at events that already have this domain IP address. So please use the custom query for um, performance benefits. Um, for the indicator index patterns, so this is where the indicators live. We just add the indicator indices here. and. Filebeat would be populated by default, as well as any um, indices that were added to the default thread index that we were previously discussing under Kibana advanced settings. But you can also manually add any other index here. Um, this would just be where the indicators are. And indicator index query similar to the custom query. This is what narrows down the indicator events, and it's recommended that this is used for performance benefits. Like right now, for instance, like where we will be looking at indicators that are fresh with this query, because like we can say that the timestamp is greater than uh, now minus 30 days. So anything, any indicators that are happening in the last month would be picked up by this indicator index query. And then we create the mapping. So I guess this is, the most important part of the indicator match rule because this is where we specify where the threat matching should take place. So whatever in our in our index, uh, in our source index has the domain IP, and whenever there is a threat intel IP on the indicator index, like for example, and there is a match between these two, then we would have the alert generated because there is a match, and that alert that is generated will already have the enrichment on it because it will have the indicator data on it um, before it's written into the alerts index. And this is basically how the indicator match rule is created. So there's a couple more steps, like you would still have to like pick out the name of the rule, description of the rule, as well as the rule execution frequency, because as we were saying, rules are periodically executed, right? And um, so it could be like every minute, every hour, or every day, like whatever the analyst or whoever is creating the rule chooses, um, that's how the rule is created. And this is what alerts look like after a rule is created and it starts like um, basically finding conditions that are matched as a part of the rule configuration, it starts generating alerts and this is an alerts table. And there's multiple ways that you can see threat intelligence on an alert. Um, but let's kind of focus on this little arrow icon. When you click this expansion arrow, it would show you the threat details on the uh, alert details flyout. So that kind of looks like this. This is just like a small screenshot of what that alert details slash threat details look like. You can see that the threat intel tab is populated. You can see that there is this like threat match detected section populated. And there's information around the name of the field where the threat has matched, the value that it matched, and the provider where the threat source came from. And we also have like additional fields on the alert about this indicator. And this is the threat enrichments basically. And normally there's a lot more fields. I just kind of put like a small screenshot, but um, you would be able to normally just like scroll down and see like lots of details around the indicator. And that's mostly it for event enrichments. As for the alert enrichments, again, like the alert enrichments are very useful because the analysts can find this information on the alerts regarding threats just in an automatic way. Like nobody actually has to manually uh, query every single IP address that might happen to be on an alert just to make sure that, you know, 
there are no secret threats that are hiding in there. The idea of the CTI features being offered automatically out of the box as alert enrichments is to ensure that nothing gets lost, like nothing falls through the cracks and everything is just like available at first sight. And it's up to the analysts after then to continue with the threat hunting flow and make like significantly more streamlined decisions because they already have the basics covered. And we looked at how events are enriched with the indicator match rule. So alert enrichment works a little differently than this. So here we have the source index indicator index on the indicator match rule execution of the detection, in the detection engine that created the already enriched alerts, right? So with the alert enrichment, what we have is again, like some sort of a source index and the rule execution and the detection engine. But this rule execution, it doesn't have to be an indicator match rule. It could really be any kind of rule. And we have a bunch of detection rules. Like we have machine learning rules, we have threshold rules, we have custom query rules. So any of those can create alerts. And those alerts are written to the alerts index. They may or may not have enrichments on them at that point. But what happens is that during the triage process, we do another enrichment query, like an additional enrichment query that also queries the indicator index after we already have the alert. And if there are any additional enrichments found at that triage stage, then we show the user the enriched alerts. So that's kind of how the process differs between the enriching events and enriching alerts. And one of the major differences, again, between enriching events and enriching alerts is that with events, with the indicator match rules, whoever creates the rule creates the mapping for the indicator match rule. So that mapping could exist on any field to any field. But um, with the alert enrichment, there's already a set of uh, predefined fields that are already created. So what's on this slide is basically those um, pre-existent field set for the alert enrichments. And as you can see that there's a bunch of um, file hashes, there's a source and destination IP addresses, and there's a full URL and registry path, as well as the matching indicator um, pieces that kind of uh, match with those. So as long as there's a match between say file hash MD5 and an MD5 hash from a indicator, then no matter where the alert came from, we would display that thread enrichment on that alert. So the indicator details would be visible on that alert. So that's how the alert enrichment works. And in terms of how the alert summary looks, it's fairly similar. So the thread intel tab would still be populated. Uh, we have the enrich with thread intelligence section that is populated. We have the same um, field name, value, and provider information populated. I guess like one difference that we have is kind of this um, date picker field. So this part is important because with alert enrichments, what we have is a default 30 day limit for the indicators. So um, this is again, like can be modified with this custom date range, because if you know, as an analyst say, like there is a um, attack campaign that happened uh, two months ago, and you want to check whether the alert that you're viewing is vulnerable to that specific campaign, then you can just change the date here and see if you get any indicator matches from those um, campaigns that happened like X time ago. Um, that's the purpose of this uh, custom date range. And to wrap everything up in terms of how all of these enrichments and indicator information add together and to reduce the mean time to detect and mean time to remediate, as we've discussed earlier, this is really to ensure that the analysts have to do the minimal, minimal amount of manual work. So because there are so many third party threat intelligence sources, um, if they're not integrated into the Elasticsearch cluster with the threat intel features the way that we're doing now, then it would absolutely take a lot of time to manually query any of those. And we just kind of solve that problem by creating this um, threat intel features so that the analyst can be enabled to spend the time uh, where it's most needed, not just um, doing things that we can automate away. So that's the purpose of the CTI, the, the cyber threat intelligence features. And that's how we reduce the mean time to detect and mean time to remediate.
Thank you so much for being here and listening to my presentation. So you can always reach out to me on the Elastic Community Slack if you have any questions about indicator match rules, alert or event enrichments, or just like performance questions about indicator match rules or anything else, any other threat intelligence features, please do so. And a big thank you to my teammates who helped this presentation.